वी आर गोइंग एक्रॉस द सब टॉपिक इंडस्ट्रियल कैपिटलिज्म और इंडस्ट्रियल फेज ऑफ कलोनियलिज्म इन इंडिया एंड अंडियर यू हैव फॉलोड अ डायग्राम यू मे रिकॉल एंड हेयर वी आर जस्ट गोइंग एक्रॉस दिस सब टॉपिक वी हैव ऑलरेडी इंटर इन टू यू कैन से द सेकेंड वन सब पार्ट ऑफ द पार्ट नंबर सेकेंड वन दिस इज द सेकेंड वन सब पार्ट ऑफ द पार्ट नंबर सेकेंड वन यू नो बिकॉज यू नो कि फॉर द सेक ऑफ यूर कॉन्वीनियंस यू हैव डिवाइडेड मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री इन फोर पार्ट फर्स्ट पार्ट वॉज द हिस्ट्री ऑफ एटीन सेंचुरी द सेकेंड पार्ट इज कलोनियलिज्म इवन कलोनियलिज्म शुड बी डिवाइडेड इन टू थ्री सब पार्ट द फर्स्ट सब पार्ट वॉज मर्केंटाइल फेज ऑफ कलोनियलिज्म द सेकेंड ऑन पार्ट इज इंडस्ट्रियल फेज ऑफ कलोनियलिज्म प्रेजेंटली वी आर जस्ट गोइंग एक्रॉस द सब टॉपिक दिस इज इंडस्ट्रियल फेज ऑफ कलोनियलिज्म because it was the time that there was a rise of industrial capitalism in britain so as a colony was supposed to be a subservient to the basic interest of the metropolitan state or the mother state so in order to fulfill the need of industrial capitalism of britain the there was the major policy shift towards india and india had to be enabled for promoting the industrial capitalist interest of london so that's why it was characterized as industrial phase of capitalism so the industrial phase of you can say colonialism i have told you earlier ki marx has divided earlier the phase of colonialism in two parts the monopoly capitalism and the free trade so my student this is the era of free trade according to in marxian term monopoly capitalism in marxian term was mercantile phase of capitalism and what you know as free trade phase so free trade phase in the lofty words of marx so this is this term was applied for this phase but who has just changed the nomenclature to mercantile industrial and financial you know so actually rajni pamdat he was an indian marxist and he followed lenin so lenin make an addition of the specific phase of capitalism and that is called financial phase of capitalism so accordingly and following the formula of lenin lenin has made the further you know interpretation of marxism according to the changing need of time so you know so following the lenin's method as well then rajni pamdat divided it in three phase mercantile industrial and financial phase we are presently going across this industrial phase um now you will just you will observe in mercantile phase as the british policy towards india was guided by the mercantile capitalist interest so britain was not in need to making any specific you can say overhauling of indian structure and in some total traditional structure was maintained with certain modifications everywhere but now you can see ki as you have entered into industrial phase you will come to realize that ki then that almost a major metamorphosis of the existing structure of india so later we will make a calculation ki what proved more damaging to india whether the mercantile phase of british capitalism or industrial phase of british capitalism and it is not simply applicable in case of india but almost in whole of the world and different colonial powers just followed the more or less the same path so here we are making a study of india and here the first one sub topic is political policy because you already uh, recalling the definition i think i am just repeating the things time and again so that the basic or basic essence of the change should be planted in your mind because if the basic essence about basic essence were clear then informations are not a difficulty for you because in interpretation you can say informations are just the examples of interpretations so in course of interpreting the things you will just recall or recollect the sufficient number of examples which you can use here and there time and again so that will not create a major problem for you if your analysis part is clear so that's why i have followed the method the method of this diagram and here you is the firstly you are specifying the objective ki what was the objective objective is to convert india as a market for british manufactured goods and the supplier of raw materials so it affected the british political policy what was the specific british political policy ki now in the previous year 
the governor generals or the administrators in India tried to avoid the war and annexation as much as possible. But still they were compelled to fight the war and to carry the annexation further on in order to fulfill the mercantile needs of the time. But now in industrial phase, out and out, the company's role was going to undergo a major change, you know, a major shift now. And the company became the administrator of India. Court of directors, you can say, basically the British parliament expected from the company something else. Ki in place of reducing your mercantile role, you have to play the major role in administration and you have to enable the capitalist, industrial, British industrial capitalism, interest of British capitalism, uh, British industrial capitalism in India. So, company's role was undergoing a phase of major metamorphosis. So, that affected its political policy. Now, it was imperative for the British company to bring more and more Indian states under the direct British control so that the British manufactured goods could have as well as the British Indian raw materials could have, you can, you can say, in have to uh, use in reverse direction means ki on the one hand the Indian market had to absorb the British manufactured goods and provide the raw materials and it was possible if more and more regions would be under the, the direct control and it is due to this fact you know he almost all governor generals and starting from Lord Hastings up to Lord Dalhoji just followed the policy of unrestricted expansion. So in the previous class, my students, in studies class, we have already discussed this aspect. The first one was the role of, uh, you know, uh, Lord Hastings, the major wars, then Amherst, after Amherst, William Bentick annexation, then you have discussed about Auckland and then Ellenborough. Then you have reached even up to Hardig and talked about the Anglo-Sikh war. But before that, I have to make you familiar with Sikhs, who were Sikhs and what was what were, what was their specific structure? Because in medieval history, you have already made a study of Sikhs and also you have been informed in the early modern phase ki how was formation of a Sikh state under different Sardars now and that was called, they were compiled and they were just organized under the missiles. But later, among the 12 missiles, it would, would be the Sukhar Chakya missile led by Ranjit Singh, which would, you can say, uh, uh, make a major stride and it would just start the empire building in northwest and while subduing other nobles and sardas it expanded and it uh, Ranjit Singh created a powerful Sikh state which could have been a rival to the British but could not have been because Ranjit Singh has followed the very different type of policy towards the British. 